things going on. Uh, what's coming up first is we have a baptism coming up too. Uh, students getting baptized uh, just after, uh, after this. And then we have a graduation uh, recognition service uh, coming up near uh, the end of the service. And then once the service is finished, uh, the youth have been working very hard downstairs to uh, prepare a lunch for all of our uh, young at heart folks. If you don't know what that means, then uh, that's okay. Uh, but you, all of our young at heart, our senior adult folks, we have prepared a wonderful lunch for you guys. Uh, just for us to say thank you, and we love you, and we appreciate uh, what you guys do for us. Uh, we know that you guys do a lot of the behind-the-scenes work that make what we do as a student ministry possible, um, that you cover us in prayers, uh, you are there for us when we need you, uh, you sponsor us to go to youth camp and to do what we do, and this is just one way that we can say thank you, we love you, and we appreciate you. So uh, after the service, um, we would like to invite all you guys downstairs for a wonderful lunch uh, prepared by the students. A scripture I'd like to uh, bring to your attention this morning, I was reading through Matthew earlier this week, and uh, in Matthew 18, there's this parable that Jesus gives on forgiveness, and it's a story about how uh, this king holds a servant accountable that, that owes him a lot of money, and um, the servant pleads for mercy and begs for mercy, and the king says, you know what, I forgive you, even though you owe me all of this, and then the servant who's just been forgiven goes out into uh, his little community, and he goes and finds somebody who owes him a little bit, and starts choking him and starts beating this guy up because he would not pay him back. And long story short, the word gets back to um, the king, and he brings a servant in who had forgiven him. He says, hey, I forgave you for what you owed me, but you're not forgiving this person out here. And then he holds that guy accountable and punishes him. And um, he says, verse 34, I, I want to read to you, he says, And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over. I'm sorry, verse 33, he said, Should you not also have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And church, what I want to bring to your attention this morning uh, is forgiveness. Um, in that we are called, commanded to forgive. I think some of the was telling the students this morning in our devotion that sometimes I believe we, that we believe forgiveness is optional. Um, but nowhere in scripture do we see that forgiveness is something that we have an option to do. Uh, that's what the world may tell us, but the word of God tells us otherwise, that forgiveness is something that we must do. In Romans 5, 6, says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And so we see right there, tagging along with that parable in Matthew 18, that even though in our sin we were enemies of God, he, he knew what we did, what we're doing, what we're going to do, he still forgave us. Man, in the same way, how much more should we, as Christians, go into our community and forgive us and forgive others who have wronged us? It's that kind of radical love that shows the world who we are as Christians and how much we love them. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today, and thank you for this time that we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, this service today, these, these baptisms that we have coming from uh, two students who have professed you as Lord and Savior and who have turned from their sin and have turned to you. Lord, we uh, join them in celebration today as we celebrate uh, the new life that is taking place uh, in their lives, Lord. God, I pray that as a church body, Lord, we will have a spirit and a heart of forgiveness. Lord, that we will forgive others who have wronged us and that we would not um, hold a grudge against them. But Lord, may we show uh, godly love through our actions. And may we uh, forgive those people, Lord. And may through those actions, may our community, may the world see Jesus living and shining through us. And may uh, you use us as your hands and feet to make a difference in this community. Lord, we give this service to you today, and we are here to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to celebrate uh, the life that these two young men have found in Jesus Christ uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, they, uh, I haven't seen kids so excited in a long time about being baptized and following Jesus. Uh, but we have uh, these two young men. Both y'all come on in here. Uh, this is Noah Cooper. Yes, you can. Hold on just a second. He's like, can I say something? Yeah, you, you bet you can. And this is Zach Cooper. Come on in here, Zach. They are brothers, and uh, they are both professing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today. And uh, so you said you want to say something? Yes, John is very warm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is warm. Awesome. All right. Well, I tell you. Um, <laughs> he said it should be it's God's water, and that's that's right. Let me tell you, when you see two young people come to Jesus, that ought to thrill our souls um, to to see them, the impact they're going to make as, on the young people as they grow up and in their families, and uh, no telling what God's going to do through the two of you. And uh, but it is time to celebrate with them uh, as we uh, baptize them this morning. And by the way, when you look at a baptism, what a baptism is is really a burial and a resurrection. That's what, the, that's what it's a picture of, them being buried in Christ and risen to walk in the newness of him. And so, uh, uh, Zach, come here. We're going to baptize you first. Here, Noah, just stand right there. Zach, stand right here. And Zach, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Fuck yes, and he always will be. Amen. Well, based upon that profession, your faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for these two young men who have uh, surrendered to you, who have uh, chosen to follow you as their Lord and Savior. And God, I pray that you would keep them strong no matter what they face in their life. May they look to you. May they uh, just surrender all that they have and who they are uh, to you and your work that you have for them. God, thank you for this church as we help support them. May we do it with all of our heart, and may we be consistent in our walk that they may see you in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, what a wonderful way to start our service this morning. Take a hand and turn to page 338, please. Wonderful words of life. Let's stand. 338.
Let's take a little time for fellowship.
Ethan and Luke to please come up front. Y'all can be seated. And what a great day for these guys right here uh, to graduate, to move on to that next chapter in your life. Yes. What a great, great day. And to be standing up here, I know it. I want to read a passage that, uh, man, it, it certainly applies to how we feel about you two and our prayer for you guys. And it comes from Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. It says this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in, his, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And guys, I just want to encourage both of you as you start this journey, and both of you are on completely different paths, but keep your eyes on Jesus. Um, you know, Luke, we're going to ask you in a minute just to kind of tell your plans what they might be tentatively. Um, and I look forward to hearing what God, where God's taking you, and you too. I don't know what you're going to do, but... Um, <laughs> But I look forward to hearing from you where God's taking you. And, uh, but we love you guys, and we do pray for you. We lift you up. And before you leave the stage, we, we have something for you, and we also uh, want to pray for you as well. But, Ethan, I'm going to let you step up to the plate and uh, present whatever you have for Luke. in high school when I was where Luke was uh, four years ago. My youth pastor uh, read this to me, Psalm 119. Uh, verses 9 through 16 says how can a young man keep his way pure by keeping it according to your word with all of my heart I have sought you do not let me wander from your commandments your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you blessed are you O Lord teach me your statutes with my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth and I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all the riches I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes, and I shall not forget your word. And Luke, um, as you go into this, this new journey, going into college, um, a, a new way of life, I would encourage you to uh, keep your way pure by hiding the word of God in your heart. Uh, not only for Luke, but also the other young men in the student ministry and the children's ministry, um, that we would keep our way pure by hiding God's word and treasuring it in your heart. That is the one thing uh, that needs to be consistent. The most important thing, your MIT, if you will, is your walk with God and treasuring his word in your heart um, and delighting in God. Do you, uh, when you get into college, <laughs> you're going to have nights when you're staying up late and you procrastinated. I never did that. And you have a paper to write and you're like, why did I do this? And just in those moments or whenever you're in football practice and it's a hard day in football, just remember to delight in the Lord. Remember to delight in God at all times and to treasure his word in your heart. And so with that, I'd like to present you with this little gift for Luke. Um, so I was with Luke back in November, and uh, we were hanging out, and um, I got him a little Bible back in November, so I didn't get him that for graduation, but what I did get him uh, was a little journal to go with his Bible that he can uh, take notes in and write down his thoughts as he's uh, spending time with the Lord. Then a nice little wallet that has, uh, I believe, Joshua 1.9 on there um, that can carry on with him. So uh, let's give a hand for Luke. All right. 
Luke, stay right there. Um, and Ethan, you stay right there. Ethan, we got you a little something as well. Um, oh, here we go. There, there. We got you a little something. You. If you would uh, open that up. You know, Ethan, uh, I got to tell you, has been a godsend to our church. And uh, he has really done a great job with our youth thus far. And uh, right now, I'm, you know, my heart's prayer, and I believe the church's prayer is that, you know, he can continue in that work here. And what this is, is we got him a plaque, and it says, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, put on all of God's armor. And so we wanted this to maybe, for him to be able to put on his desk, you know, and say, you know what, this is, this is what they encouraged me to do at my very start of my ministry and uh, to always put on God's armor. I mean, before you walk out of the house, before you do anything, you put on the armor of God. And uh, then we also got him a book called The Man in the Mirror, which is a great book talking about um, a lot of different aspects of a man's life and, and how we scripturally and biblically go through and handle those, those things of, of manhood. And uh, so, brother, we love you and we thank you. And, uh, you know, we are just so proud of the both of you. <laughs> Let me pray with y'all before y'all run down. Lord Jesus, thank you so much uh, for what you have done in Luke's life, uh, bringing him to this point to where now uh, he'd be leaving the nest and going out on his own. But may he be guided by your hand and by your spirit uh, wherever he goes. And I pray that you would watch over him and give him that hunger that Ethan was talking about for your word, uh, God, in his life. And, and just a hunger for you uh, that uh, uh, there's a lot of decisions to be made out there. But God, we just pray that you would help him make the right decisions, that he would glorify you. Father, for Ethan, I pray that as he continues to, to minister here and at the camp and wherever you take him, God, that he would be a light for you. Uh, that he would be a voice for you, Lord, that the junk of this world would not infiltrate either one of these guys um, to, uh, to the point where they just feel like falling down and quitting. But God, that you would inspire them, encourage them, fill them with your spirit uh, as they move forward, uh, that they would certainly just make an impact in this world for you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Ethan, what did you say MIT was? <laughs> Ethan has this streak. He speaks that I cannot understand him. <laughs> uh, it doesn't, I mean, it's not the first time. We were, me and Ethan and Harry were downstairs one day talking. I don't remember what it was. It was maybe about to sign across the street or something. Harry said, well, what, what do you think? And he said, well, I, I DK. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Got that off my chest. 560. <laughs> Offertory hymn, Oh How I Love Jesus. Let's do verses 1, 2, and 4, please, as we stand. 560. <laughs>
prayer. sick this morning. She thought she was going to be able to come. She's got tremendous bronchitis. Some of y'all have had this coughing and it's, it's terrible stuff. She thought she was going to be able to come and then last night it kept getting worse and worse. So she called uh, Hannah and immediately she said that she'd come play and I, I really do appreciate it. With the, uh, <laughs> you know the, the young people in this church right now taking over, they can and they will. This group back here, it, when they started coming in, it really touched my heart, it really did. Uh, I appreciate the parents for what you do for Ethan and for all of the people that help with the youth. Uh, it's, it's a blessing, it really is. This morning we're gonna sing a song that you probably know, it's called Shouting High.
kids for children church go that way and uh, Luke and Ethan y'all come back up here for just one second come on back up here you know sometimes I just get in a hurry I want to hear about these guys <laughs> Lucas opened yeah. oh no Luke I did not forget brother we want to hear your story <laughs> yeah what are your plans <laughs> they give you time to think. Um, so after graduating, my plans are to obviously continue on here as youth minister. As long as Harry will have me, here you go. Um, uh, but stay here and work with the students for the foreseeable future. Um, the Lord has placed. Um, I, I gotta tell you a story. So uh, not to be long-winded, and not Samara, I will be short. Um, she always gets on to me. But when I came up here to interview the first time last year uh, in the winter, the, my first time driving down here. I was like, there's no way I'm coming here. Like, this is, I'm from the beach. This is not the beach. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see, like, any, there's nowhere to eat up here. Like, there's, I got lost. I was like, I don't even know where the church is at. In my first drive here, I was like, there's no way God's going to call me here. And just when you tell God no way, he says, oh, yes way. <laughs> That's my name, <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> anyway, so, like, coming here, I had no, really, I was like, I was coming here to get experience with the interview process, and you know, yeah, I, I, we'll see how it goes. But then over the course of meeting with the youth committee and meeting with Harry, and over the course of those couple of weeks, the Lord really turned my heart in ways I never saw coming, uh, I never planned to do. And He put a, a burden, a calling on my heart to uh, be here and work with the students here. At Gap Creek, and, and that's what I, I feel is my calling now for the foreseeable future is to work with the students here, um, to come alongside parents and to dis disciple these students and to uh, help train them up in the ways of the Lord, uh, so that they can go out into the community and be lights for Jesus. And so that's my that's my main calling, the main thing that the Lord's called me to. Um, I also feel led to attend seminary. Um, I'm looking to go to Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in the fall and do an online slash hybrid program where I will go to the seminary uh, for two or three weekends out of the semester and then do some classes online. That way I can stay here and continue doing what I'm doing, but while simultaneously uh, pursuing my Master's of Divinity um, yeah, at Southeastern. Uh, and then obviously I work at Awanata and I'm the program director there and I help Steve Clayton and then I Awanata with the program camps that they have and so 
Um, he has given me a, a wonderful responsibility for that and given me a lot of room to run and to try new things uh, that I've been learning in, at NGU and I can be applying these things now. And so it's really cool to, uh, to be here with the students and to be over there at Awanata um, doing programming for them uh, and ministering to students in a different way uh, than what uh, a youth pastor would. It's really encouraging. So those are my plans uh, for the foreseeable future. And Luke, I hope you got that. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> um, I was not told we had to speak. <laughs> um, so in June, I will be flying out to California to Woodland Hills, a little bit to the left of LA to play football. And some, sometime in like anywhere from like a semester to two years, plan to transfer back to a four-year university on the East Coast. Very we good. Oh, I want to major in architecture. Ah, very good. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much, and we will continue to pray for you through this journey. All right. I want to tell you a little story. There was a man by the name of Chuck. Chuck was driving down the road. Uh, it was a dark, rainy night, and he had a flat tire. He was out in the country, nothing around, but he looked up ahead and he saw a little cabin. And when he looked at this cabin, he said, well, I, I, I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll knock on that door. But as he walked, he began to think to himself, and he said, you know, I bet whoever answers that door is going to be upset and irritated that I even came to their door and interrupted their evening. And then as he thought a little more, he thought, you know, also that person who lives in that cabin, I bet is a terrible person. Because who in the world would live in a cabin out in the middle of the woods away from everybody, except unless they were running from the law? Terrible people. That's and so he was getting himself pretty worked up. And he thought, you know what, this person that I'm, that's going to answer that door, I just have no idea what kind of person, except that they just got to be awful. So he knocks on the door, and they answer the door, and what does he do? He punches them in the nose and runs away. Hmm. Sometimes we're like that. Sometimes we get these things in our head before we even know what's happening. We make up things in our head before we even know the truth. And let me tell you where that comes from. That comes from what the devil wants us to be on this earth. What that is is where the, the uh, flesh has this way about it to make presumptions and to seek things of this earth and not the things above, not those holy things, not the, the precious things of God. And the guy walked back to his car and still had a flat tire in the rain because he made these things up in his head because he listened to the flesh, he listened to the world, he listened to the devil before he even got help. I want us to look at a passage of Scripture today. It's over in Colossians chapter 3. And this passage teaches us to be eternally kingdom-minded instead of earthly-minded, where we get caught up in this temporal things of this world. We say and do things according to the world. Uh, to be eternally minded means that we look beyond all of the context of this life, this earthly life, and we see a bigger picture. We see a, a kingdom picture, one where we serve God, one where we love God, where we uh, live out our faith in Christ and show the world His love. By the way, 
if, if you take your license out or your, pa- your, your driver's license or your passport, when you look at it in 50 years, I'm just telling you, for the most of us, it's not going to make any difference. 90 years, it's not going to make any difference because we're going to be in eternity. Do, do we understand that? We are here for such a short period of time. What kind of impact does Christ want you to make on those around you? Let's begin reading verse 1, Colossians chapter 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things on earth, for you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's pray. God, as we open up your word, as we listen to your Holy Spirit, let us seek those things above. Let us seek you in our hearts and our minds. Now you be who guides us in our speech and our actions and all that we say and do and how we love and how we show compassion. Lord, speak to our hearts now in Jesus' name, amen. So how can we develop this heavenly mindset? Uh, By the way, Satan does attack our minds. Don't don't think for a minute that, that he doesn't. He attacks our minds. But here's the deal. When we open up the door, when we, when we give him a foothold, he comes in and he confuses matters. He gives us doubts and fears and worldly thoughts and, and anger that is not a godly anger. Satan wants to keep us focused on those things that really don't matter. But Jesus, he says, I want us to seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. And so whenever we feel ourselves become anxious, worried, angry to the point of bitterness, I want to assure you that that is not from God. I want to assure you that Satan is just toying with us and God's word is truth. And what we want to do with God's word today is look into it, grab hold of it, and and carry it in in our lives and who we are. We want to make it a part of who we are. So the very first thing I want us to, to, to take notice of is this. He said at the very beginning, if then you were raised in Christ. Well, let's just stop right there. We have, those of us who have, uh, repented of our sins, turned to Jesus, and asked Him to come and be Lord and Savior of our lives, and we make that commitment to follow Him, you have been raised with Christ. Which means that being raised up in Christ, you will make a significant godly impact in your family, in your work, in your church, wherever you are. This, this impact that Christ makes in our lives, this change, being raised in Christ, what that means is that we uh, seek things differently. We see things differently. We think differently. Um, we, we are secure in our future with Christ. We don't have to worry anymore. What exactly is Paul referring to when he talks about being raised with Christ? All right, first, in order to be raised with Christ, we must identify with him in his death, all right? So what I want us to do is look, you can either take some notes right in the margin, but there's some scriptures that I'm going to be going on. I do not have notes up here on the screen today, but when you're talking about this death, when you're talking about this being raised, we got to look at this death Romans 6, 8 says this. Now, if we died with Christ, and this is Romans 6, 8. 
Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. All right, now, this is all through the Gospels, us dying uh, to ourselves and being raised to walk in this newness of life that Christ gives. And that's what this baptism is. It's what it's about. That's what it's a picture of, being buried, dying to ourselves, and then being raised to walk with Jesus. In Colossians chapter 1, I want you to turn over there, uh, verse one, chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. Uh, listen to what he says here. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. This is Jesus. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of, his, of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of of sins he has moved us from death into life he has moved us into being guilty into forgiveness uh, look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 and and again all through this uh, this uh, book it, it speaks of this but look at uh, verse 12 buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So in order to be raised like he's speaking of over here in verse 1 of chapter 3, if then you were raised with Christ, have you experienced this death? Have you uh, died to yourself? Let me tell you, this when you're talking about um, uh, somebody coming into Christ, your personal testimony of being saved, it is a radical transformation. I want you to understand this. It is as radical, you going from death into life, as if there was a uh, casket right here with an old man in it, and all of a sudden in the middle of the funeral, he pops up, jumps out of the casket, and now is alive and is new. And young and vibrant and alive it is that radical what God has done in your life and in my life in Jesus for, for us to to look at our salvation and kind of fluff it off or, or look at how we look at Jesus in our lives and you know when, when he talks about we were raised with Christ this is not just, hey, you know, you're with us now. Now you're part of a Sunday school class. Now you're part of a church. Um, you know, if we could just get your name and number, and, and we're going to try to find a place to plug in. Guys, if that's all church is to you, then I pity you. Church, being a part of the body of Christ, is something so magnificent that you and I could have never thought of this, by the way. But a plan to transform us from the walking dead into a brand new, beautiful, living creature, new in Christ, brand new. In... Uh, Romans 6, 4, again, he, he, he states again, Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father so we too may walk in the newness of life. But we also must identify with him in the resurrection. Okay, I mean, if this passage in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 1 is going to apply to us, we must look at the death of Christ, our spiritual death, us dying to ourselves and, and, and listening to the call of God in our lives, and we answered that call, and now He's given us a new life through repentance. He's given us this new life in Jesus. He says, now... You've been raised with Christ. So now we, we've identified with him in, the, in his death, but now let's identify with him in his resurrection. Uh, Colossians uh, 2.13, 
says this, and, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him having forgiven you of all trespasses. That is not a small thing. You were once dead. He has made you alive and forgiven you of all your sins. I, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've remodeled something in your house, um, in, in a business or wherever. But when you go to a remodeling, okay, let's just pretend it's your kitchen. So you walk into your kitchen and all of a sudden they tear everything out. You're getting new cabinets, you're getting new floor, you're getting new light fixtures, you're getting new appliances, you're getting all of these things. But in order to do that, they've got to get all the old stuff out. I mean, I, I don't know if y'all have experienced the remodel, but they've got to get all the old stuff out in order to bring the new stuff in. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people want the new life in Christ. A lot of people want the new. Bring in the new. But here's the problem. They don't want God to touch the old. This, this new life that he gives us is a new life that changes our purpose in life. You know, I love to hear uh, Luke, I love to hear your story about, hey, going to California, um, I'm going to be praying for you really hard in California. Why can't, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, California, God wants you to go to California, you go to California. I'm going to tell you this. And Luke, if God wants you to stay here, then you stay here. Wherever you are in your walk with Christ, are you ready for a new purpose? Because in Christ, you got it. The old is gone and the new has come. New purposes have now been applied to your life. Now, what that does also is whenever you look for a job. You know what a believer does when they look for a job? What do they do? They pray. They seek God in the new job. And then when they get the job, you know what they do? God, show me how I can be a light for you at this job. It's not about them anymore. It's a whole new purpose. It's about seeing people saved. It's about seeing people grow in their faith. It's completely new. Then he tells us this. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Seek those things above and by the way when, when you talk about seeking this is uh, the greek word here talks about an ongoing quest not not one where you go hey i'm a new believer god direct me in my paths and and then that's it no always seeking his will always seeking god which way do you want me to go God, I want your message to be spoken. I want the words that I say to my boss, to my employees, to my mom, my dad, my wife, my brother, my sister, to my friends, whatever it is, God, I want it to be your voice. I want it to be your words. Seeking the things that are above. And by the way, the way it's written here, it's not an option. It is a command. He says, seek those things which are above. Seek them. Why does he tell you and I as believers to seek them? He's talking to the church here. Seek these things. Because I promise you, when you do not seek the things that are of God then the devil will have a foothold in your life and you will be so confused and so downhearted most of your life making wrong decisions here and there and here and there that you, you will just be at the end going, God, where are you? And he's saying, 
you didn't seek me. I've been here all the time. Seek those things which are above. Keep seeking, searching, striving, investigating, pursuing. There's something about waiting passively for God to just work in our lives. Um, I encourage you not to wait passively. If you don't change, by the way, the things that you're seeking, if, if, and, and oftentimes pride gets in the way and, and the devil says, you don't have to seek this, you, you know, you're, you're above that, you don't, you don't have to do that, you don't have to stoop down. God says, you seek me, you call, you call out to me and I'm going to hear you. But if you don't change what you are seeking, you will continue to live in the same pursuit of the sin that you're in now. You will continue in the same sinful goals, the same sinful patterns before you even made a profession of faith. It's just going to be a pattern. If you do not seek the things that are of God, those things that are above. Another thing that's going to happen when you don't seek is you won't grow in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. You won't know his will for your life. You're going to be guessing all your life. When you don't seek his will, those things that are above. But here's, what, here's where the change takes place. When there is repentance. Let me tell you, when there's repentance in your heart, there's a change of mind, there's that change of direction, and, and you're going, no, I, I'm going I'm to trust God, I'm going to seek Him. There is going to be evidence in your life that you are following Jesus Christ. But is there evidence right now in your life that you're following Him? Is there evidence that people see it well, here's another thing. When you don't seek him, you are so vulnerable to false teachings. I mean, I mean, all of a sudden you'll hear something uh, and you'll be like, whoa, man, that sounds right on. That's just exactly what I needed to hear. But it's not scripture. It's not God's truth. It may sound good, philosophical, but it's not God's truth. And you will be pulled away from what God has for you so easily when you're not seeking him so when you do seek him what, what does that mean in Matthew 6 uh, Matthew 6 he tells us he says here is what it is to seek me uh, Matthew 6 beginning in verse 19 because we, hey, let me tell you, it's easy to, to chase the dollar. I tell, I tell young people all the time, whatever you do, do not chase the dollar. Man, you chase after God. God will provide. He, he tells us, right, he says like, right here, Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. In heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, our existence here does not have anything to do with how much we can make, how much we can accumulate. It has everything to do with building a stronger and loving relationship with Jesus Christ, submitting to him and letting him guide you. What kind of treasure are you building up right now? Is it a spiritual, heavenly, above treasure? Or is it one that, that you're going, man, I got I to gotta man up and I got to do this and I've got to do that, you know, for, for my parents to be proud of me? Let me tell you, I'd rather God be proud of me than my parents be proud of me. I would rather know that I am trusting and following God and having that spiritual stability rather than letting this world sneak in and change my values and my plans. 
He, uh, Jesus, wants us to be occupied with Him. He wants us to completely be absorbed in what He wants for our lives. Um, dieting. Nobody likes to diet. Actually, if you get on a, like, a real, I, I, I call them real diets, the food that you eat is not even tasty food. It's, they, they tell you, carrots is, is your friend. Well, carrots is my friend, but I don't want to eat them at every snack time. You know, celery, there's no sustenance in celery. Um, they, they, they tell you, you know, salad, well, salad, it's just, I don't know. If I was on that kind of a diet, then I would not even want to eat the food. You know, my wife, if it was a fish diet, she'd be like, there is no way on this planet I'm going to go on a fish diet. There are certain foods that, good foods, now all of those are so good for you. But here is what happens. If, if the person develops a taste for the food that they uh, need to eat, then what happens is they're going to eat the right things and they're going to get a benefit from it. When, when we begin to seek those things above, when we begin to trust the Lord with our lives, here's what happens. All of a sudden, we begin to enjoy what we're eating. We begin to say, Lord, you're changing things in my life. You're, you're changing the way I think. I actually... Every day, man, I, I cannot wait to get into your word. You know, that's the kind of diet I like, but it's God's Holy Spirit that makes those changes in my life. It, it's whenever you begin to, to get into God's word and pray and seek Him, your hunger is going to change. Because right now, your hunger may just be for the world. Where is your hunger? What do you long for? What, do you, what, what are the things that you long after? Are they godly? Are they biblical? Do, do they correspond with, with what Jesus teaches in the Word? Or is it something that you really don't care what God says? When you seek God, when you pursue Him, He will teach you and show you and change you. Whenever I think about new beginnings, going to college, starting a career, um, whether it be maybe a new relationship, maybe... Maybe a new church, maybe whatever it may be, something new, something. Do my thoughts go to, God, what is your purpose for me in this? What do you want me to do? How are you going to use me in this? Teach me, show me, show me, Lord, what, what it is. You know, I, I, I have died and I've been raised with you, um, you know, from death to life. I mean, you have given me this life. Now, God, what are you what are you doing with me? What, what are you going to use me for? God, I'm so excited. I, 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 God, I'm ready. I'm willing um, to, to be and to do whatever you call me to do. Because, guys, our, our life is hidden in Christ. And, and what that means is our life is safe with Him. To be in Him is to stand fully righteous before God, clothed with righteousness in Jesus himself. It, it's not about what you do, about the, your accomplishments, about what the world says. It is about Christ himself, you being hidden in Christ. So... When you look in a mirror, do you see that person 
that Christ has made for his glory? Or do you see that person that, man, life just stinks right now and I don't know what to do about it. Uh, there was a man who, he had a clock and it was hanging from the wall in his office and the clock could never keep good time, ever. Uh, something was, was always off. Well, he put a little sign under the clock and the sign read this. When you look at this clock, please don't blame the hands. The problem is on the inside. Guys, God's calling us out to be the church. He's calling us out to live as he has called us to live, as he has made us alive. Maybe the problem's on the inside. But it's time to set our minds on the things above, not on the things of this earth. It's time to set our eyes on Jesus. It's time to, to recommit our lives. It's time to, to say, you know what? I know that I have not lived according to who Christ has called me to be. But I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to say, you know what? From this point on, I'm seeking Him above all things. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to say, you know what? I am ready. I'm ready to be bound up in Christ. I'm ready to, to let Him have full control of every part of my life. And I'm going to please him. I'm going I'm to try to please him in, in every part of my life. I, I want to walk as Jesus walked. I want to say what Jesus says. I don't, I don't want to look in the mirror and see Harry. I want to look in the mirror and see Jesus. Are you ready to make that commitment? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we uh, give this time to you. And Father, as we commit our life to you, I pray, God, that you would show us how beautiful it is to walk in you, to be hidden in you, to, to have died to ourselves and have life in you. God, to get us out of the just going to church rut and really understanding what it is to have that relationship with you to repent of our sins and just say Lord I want to follow you forgive me of my sins I'm ready and that is where that's the moment when we die and Jesus is raised up in our life God, I pray that if there's anybody here who is just ready to commit totally and fully to you, God, that this morning they would come to the altar, that they would pray, that they would just lift it up to you. God, that they would say, God, here I am. You know me. Let me die that you may live through me, that I can be a light for you. Father, speak to our hearts. May you be glorified in us and through this church. In Jesus' name, amen.